What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Hopefully everyone had a safe and happy Halloween last night. Got a chance to go out, get some candy, or, or uh, give out candy even. Uh, today we have a bunch of stuff to go over. First though, I, I wanna quickly talk a bit about that Vita giveaway. Uh, the email is going out today to the winner, and then we should be able to announce the winner as long as we get a hold of them over the weekend on Monday. If I don't get a hold of you by Saturday night, I'll probably have to then go over and redraw on Sunday. So make sure you're keeping an eye on your email so we can get a hold of you and get your Vita out to you and everything. Exciting stuff there, and we'll do some more giveaways going forward as well. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel and make sure you're subscribed so you can keep up to date with all of the giveaways that we'll be doing. Uh, today, we have a bunch of stuff to go over, which includes Bluepoint, I, I think trolling us, I'm not sure. Bluepoint's doing a remake of something or a big remaster, a big game, and now they're just messing with us after taking a look at the internet. Yeah, they, they're definitely paying attention to what we're all saying. And Nintendo seems to be looking at the Switch with all of their studios kind of thrown into one bucket at this point and saying, well, what 3D games can we get on the Switch? Some interesting stuff there. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure the like button, it does help out, and get subscribed so you can stay up to date on all the gaming news going on in the gaming world. And we're gonna start today with Saints Row the Third because Saints Row got a patch. And what's interesting about this patch for the Switch is it seems to address some issues that were causing the game to run a bit slower in terms of frame rate or input latency. There is a fairly lengthy explanation, as you're seeing here, all about the patch they put out. And we're talking a dynamic resolution that will change 720p to 480p, somewhere in that range in handheld, and then 1080p to 720p and docked. And that can be turned off, they said, but you probably end up seeing better frame rates, I would say, uh, with that dynamic resolution on aim assist uh, they have fixes for graphical issues and they have apparently gyro aiming in the works so if you were someone who was like there's no gyro why is there no gyro aiming it seems like that is coming uh, it also seems like maybe this game needed a little more time in the oven before it launched but hey it, it, at least it's coming out with a patch that's going to be addressing a lot of issues and they're not just like abandoning the game so that's good news also if you were someone who had picked up bloodstained on the switch and you weren't happy with the performance the way it looked or my biggest gripe the input latency well you're in luck because they did put out an update it was kind of just like stealth dropped almost like no one really heard about this coming outside of them saying eventually it'll show up like they didn't announce a release date ahead of time which I prefer just in case they miss the release window, they, they don't have to then delay it essentially, but this addresses quite a bit of stuff. They posted on their Kickstarter and then it's up for uh, now download, 1.03 is the patch, and we're talking visual upgrades, so issues around maybe, they're, they're saying just like backgrounds and some more blurry visuals, texture work, and the biggest thing that I recognized was input latency. This game doesn't run great on pretty much anything, except for a, a stronger PC, obviously. But even like the PlayStation 4, I noticed there was a few bosses that had slowdown. However, the Switch does run the worst out of all of them, but it does look like they put some work into this patch. And if you have Bloodstain and you shelved it waiting for it, it is here. I would go download that patch and see if it runs better for you. Check that input latency. That was the biggest thing that really caused me to not want to play it was the fact that I would press a button and it just, it felt like I was streaming the game almost. Oh, and do you remember that game that Shinnin announced during a, uh, what was like an indie stream that Nintendo was doing? The Tourist, it now has a release date and it has a price. They put this out on Twitter seeing here, the Taurus is coming, release date November 21st, and it's gonna be $19.99, so $20. And you know what? I saw this game and it kind of reminded me of 3D Dot Game Heroes, but it's an action adventure game where it takes place on an island, you're the tourist, go figure. And it almost seems like you're it's kind of like a Zelda style game because it has puzzle elements in there as well. It's it's very interesting. I do like kind of the voxel look that they have going on. And again, it reminds me of 3 Dot Game Heroes. I thought that game looked really good. And Shinnin is very good at optimizing their games and figuring out how to get them to work well while also looking really good, I think. Like Fast RMX looks good. And at that breakneck speed, it's really cool to see the frame rate and not miss a beat at all. So yeah, I'm in for Taurus. I'm gonna be checking that out in November. And I think... I think I'm gonna be uh, pleasantly surprised with what we get from it. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with the 3DS and the Switch. Now look, the 3DS, it's no secret, it's on its way out. Look, I, th I think it had a good run, right? It's, it's been, what, seven years or eight years? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while, right? It's been, it's coming up on a decade. I don't think it's gonna make it a decade, right? Let's put it out there. It's, it's not gonna make it a decade, but, but, 
I, th I think for what it's done, it's been pretty good. And now Nintendo is of course moving to the Switch where all of their studios, some that may have worked on the 3DS exclusively, is working on the Switch. Everything's coming together. But if you look back at that 3DS, there, there are some titles that I think people would prefer to be put on the Switch. Like when Luigi's Mansion came out, right, on the 3DS, people were wondering, why isn't that on the Switch? When uh, we had the 2D Metroid game come out, right, Samus Turns, that was on the 3DS, but not the Switch. There were a lot of question marks around why that was. However, most of them are probably in development, you know, a while ago or, or long enough ago that the, it wasn't ready to just move to the Switch. And they wanted to keep the 3DS alive at least a little bit. But check this out. This was from Takashi Machizuki, as of course, there is all of this stuff going on right now with investors. Well, it looks like they might be thinking that same way of bringing some 3DS stuff over. It said, the result is encouraging for Pokemon games coming next month. Nintendo chief Furukawa said, company would make more 3DS franchises available on Switch to convey appeal of light. So the Switch Lite, of course, which is a handheld. I mean, there's there's no denying that. I mean, some people argue, oh, the Switch itself, it, the hybrid console is a handheld and it just hooks up to the TV, which it, I mean, it kind of is, but it does have some different differences between when it's in docked mode versus uh, handheld play where the clock speeds and everything will change. So it does technically become a console, I guess you could say, but the Switch Lite doesn't dock at all. None of that. So they kind of look at that as the, I think the 3DS successor. So it would make sense to bring some 3DS franchises over. I think something like if they talk with Square, for example, and do something with the Bravely series, I know we have Octopath Traveler, but Bravely Default could still kind of be going along. And then I think the biggest one that I would like to see would probably be Kid Icarus. I mean, that was a game that had some control issues. People pointed this out a lot. It also came with a stand. That kind of tells you all you need to know there, the fact that uh, they included a stand for your portable system so that it was more comfortable to play. Eh, it's, that probably means the controls weren't great. You also have a lot of the Mario and Luigi RPG style games, right? Bowser's Inside Story. We also had a few that released on the 3DS and it didn't do that well. So maybe Nintendo's thinking, well, huh, we could just go get those and maybe port them to the Switch, figure out some of the things that worked with the, where it was with the 3DS where it used the two screens. They can probably work it out to where it would just work on just the Switch. There, I'm sure there are some things they can do if they want it there, but what really looks like is happening here is Nintendo sees that Pokemon is able to move to the Switch. It's made the transition. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee selling 11 million copies now. It's pretty good. Sword and Shield, will probably sell over 15 million by the time we hear about it after the holidays, which is obscene, right? So going back and grabbing some 3DS franchises makes sense, but why not? They're there. Some of them, I think, underperformed on the 3DS. Like, come on, Samus Return, that, ha that has to make the jump. That, it makes so much sense. And it would probably look a lot better anyway, even though it'd be the same visuals, they'd clean them up and I, I probably 60 frames across for that and all. It would just, I think, run much better. And why not? Let me know what 3DS games you guys would like to see come over because it does sound like Nintendo is at least planning it. And I don't think those are going to be their big releases. Like, I don't think that's going to hold up a holiday, but it could kind of fill in the gaps for some where we've seen some Wii U ports. Maybe it's time to start seeing a bunch of 3DS ports. Next up, let's talk about Nintendo and Amazon. Let's say you get a game for your Switch or your 3DS and you want to resell it, but you don't want to sell it to GameStop. You're just like, oh, I'll go on Amazon. I'll post it there. I'll sell it and then I'll move on. I know a lot of stores that would do this as well, like retail stores, like mom and pop stores that would use eBay or Amazon just to just to move some stock that's been kind of hanging out for a while and maybe they don't want to run to a convention to kind of stock and, and sell there. I mean, it works well, but here's the interesting thing. Uh, people are starting to now say that they're not able to sell used first party Nintendo games on Amazon. In fact, it appears to have ended today. People were actually taking to Reddit, showing off emails that were sent to them. And it seems to imply that Nintendo does not want their used first party games. I keep saying first party because it appears that used third party games are not affected by this. But as of today, it actually seemed to happen last night. They just started pulling down all the different first party Nintendo games. So like, let's say you have a uh, new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe and you bought it and you realize it's just the Wii U game all over again <laughs> and you want to get rid of it, but you don't want to go trade in a GameStop for 10 bucks and that might be 
overselling that. Maybe you wanna to try to get 30 bucks back for it, you throw it on Amazon, you sell it, and you move on. Well, apparently that can't happen anymore. It's up to Nintendo to allow you to do that. And you might be wondering, why would this happen? Well, the only thing I can think of is that Nintendo wants to control the distribution of counterfeit games, which do exist on Amazon. They also exist on eBay and a lot of other places. So while it appears to be starting right now with Amazon, I could see it spread to eBay. I don't think it'll ever really affect GameStop as they are uh, more legit than just people selling on Amazon. Uh, it is interesting, I would say, to see Nintendo care a bit more than I figure they would about random sales on Amazon or eBay of their first party properties. But hey, Nintendo doesn't mess around with their first party stuff. So I guess it's not too surprising to see them do this. It's just, it is strange that they are spending their time on that. Next up, let's talk about Blue Point, who appears to be working on what we assume to be a PlayStation 5 game. Uh, we think they're doing some sort of remake, remaster, something. There have been a lot of rumors around what they are working on currently, and Blue Point decided, let's have some fun with those rumors. All the people are talking, let's put something out there. This is like, Retro Studios level of trolling where they're talking about barbecue and stuff and then they don't release anything except for apparently they're working on Metroid Prime 4 now. I, I guess they did some work with Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze but then they were busy barbecuing. Okay, sure. Well, Blue Point thought they'd have a bit more fun and be a way more direct than what we've seen something like Retro Studios. This is the tweet that they put out. It says, so calm this spooky night, a symphony of rumors, not one, but two, return from shadow, a resistance to dart home as black monsters escape, twisted hills to wander lands and siphon souls, filter your candy collections soft from solid and be eco-friendly, have a metal Halloween. Now you might be looking at this right now and saying, I can pick out at least one or two references to a couple of different games that maybe they could be remaking. Well, here are apparently all of the ones that were referenced. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Demon's Souls, Metal Gear Solid, Resistance, Siphon Filter, The Legend of Dragoon, and Twisted Metal. The funny thing is, they might not be doing any of those. They could be doing their own game, or like or a brand new game. I do think they're doing a big time remake though. I think it's gonna be big when they announce it. I hope it's Metal Gear Solid 1. That would be amazing, by the way, if they did that. I love Twin Snakes, but I would love... Could you imagine seeing Metal Gear Solid unveiled as a PlayStation 5 game? That would be mind-blowing. Legend of Dragoon would be really cool as well, but that would be, a, I think, a pretty big undertaking. That, that'd be quite a bit. And I don't know if they'd want to do that, but even if you start looking at it, Resistance, I don't know if that's old enough, but Siphon Filter? That could be. And again, we're kind of pointing to all these games that they references, I think playfully, but it still makes you wonder, what is Bluepoint working on and when are they going to announce it? I think personally, E3 is when they announce it, provided that Sony even shows up there. In our last bit of news, let's talk a bit about Ubisoft because they had a bad week, bad couple of days. They've kind of turned it around though. Their stock has gone back up and they seem to be trying to steady the ship. They even asked developers to pitch them some unique ideas after Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which is very cookie cutter for Ubisoft, failed. Uh, so yeah, they're looking for some ideas. But one thing that's happening is, do you remember all those games they were delaying and saying we're pushing them back? Think of Watch Dogs Legion or, or uh, Gods and Monsters, for example. Apparently they're gonna start making versions of those games for the next systems. This is what East Gielmo had to say. The five titles, yes, they will be on this generation and the next generation, and they will take full advantage of all the new features that are coming with the machines, which are actually going to be extremely interesting for players. You will be able to download new content a lot faster. Players will experience better frame rates. I like that. There are lots of very good elements that will come with these new machines. I'm not surprised to hear that things like Watch Dogs Legions, Gods and Monsters, and Rainbow Six Quarantine would make the cross-generational leap, mostly because, I mean, at this point, Watch Dogs might not come out until August. What if what if Watch Dogs ended up being the holiday game for them? That'd be, that'd be crazy. It could launch alongside the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Scarlet, absolutely. And that would be interesting because they basically just told us that if you're going to get a PlayStation 5, you wanna wait for the PS5 version. So I hope they do launch close to the PlayStation 5 and they're ready to go at launch. And it, because if they don't release a patch, we assume that these systems are being backwards compatible, are you really gonna buy something like Gods and Monsters for the PS4 or the Xbox One if you know it's coming to the next platform after the PS5 and the next or Xbox Scarlet come out? I don't know. I feel like he just said frame rates. I want higher frame rates. I assume that these games will go from, let's say, 30 to 60, moving up a generation. I'd rather wait for that. But 
Still, I'm glad that they're at least, Watch Dogs Legion, I think is going to heavily benefit, you know, this open world style game, a ton of characters on screen. I think that's gonna benefit the most with that jump, but right now, Gods and Monsters is the most interesting to me because it looks the least like a Ubisoft game. So that's the one I'm looking forward to, but Watch Dogs Legion could be, could be interesting to see how big of a jump there really is, because that would be a game that would probably test the new systems really well. And we'll finish up with the comment of the days you're seeing here. This one is from Young Dev saying, let's get a Skate Remaster Trilogy, or even one of them would be nice since EA won't give us Skate 4. I, uh, I read this comment and I thought, Skate remat? Do we need a skate remaster? How old is skate? All right, so get ready to feel old. Skate, the first one, is 12 years old. <laughs> Think about that first. It's 12 years. It came out in 2007, September of 2007. It just turned 12 uh, like a month and a half ago. Yes, that it. It's amazing how how we don't even realize how old some of these games get. But yeah, the original Skate was awesome when that showed up, and I, I just I just want Skate Four. But it's a double-edged sword because you know Skate Four is gonna be riddled with microtransactions. Like they'll sell us a deck, they'll sell us a hat, they'll sell us shoes, they'll sh they'll sell us trucks. It'll be like walking into a skate shop just with a bunch of fake currency that you have to trade in real currency to get. But still, I I, I want Skate Four. I'd rather it exist with all that stuff than just not exist because I really want Skate 4. I don't know if they would ever remaster any of the Skate games, but if they had to do it and they went back and got like Skate 2 or 3 and brought it to something like the Switch and then released Skate 4 everywhere as well, that would be pretty neat. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, the like button really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is Bluepoint and they're trolling, they just talked about like six different franchises that they could be working on. What do you want them to work on? And if it's not one that they uh, alluded to or trolled with, what do you want to see them do? Also, what about 3DS games on the Switch? Which games are on the 3DS now that maybe underperformed and you want to see show up? Let me know about that, guys, down below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you back here 8 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday morning for Newswave.